Great. Uh, do we have anybody new for the first time? I think I see mostly familiar faces. What I thought we would do this week is something different. I've been collecting home movies of the fair forever. Uh, I have uh, more of them than any man should have, just like too many photos. <laughs> But a number of years ago, I gave a talk at uh, the Big E up in Massachusetts, and they wanted some video uh, playing in the background on a monitor. So I gave them uh, an hour's worth of video. They transferred it over to uh, uh, a video for me. And I thought people might like to see some video that you don't see all the time sitting out on Facebook. Uh, it's all eight millimeter uh, stuff, silent. So what I thought I'd do is rather than mute everybody uh, each week as we do is let people comment and uh, you know, if they have any particular observations, memories, questions, we can do it real time rather than uh, uh, you know, uh, at the end. Uh, Carol, I see the mouse seeds got on, so they, 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 they got their problem worked. So everybody should be able to unmute yourself. The only thing I ask people is uh, you know, not for anybody, uh, one person to hog or monopolize it. And uh, you know, uh, if you have any particular comments that you want to raise or anything, we need to stop the film. I can always do that. But let me come down here to get it going. Yeah, with all your videos and photos, you ever recognize anybody in the pictures? Uh, yeah, I recognize Guy Lombardo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's actually interesting though. Uh, trying to uh, the, the go through and. Uh, figure out if we spotted anybody and this one fellow that's on here might talk about how we think we spotted his family in the uh, in some of the pictures so uh, I have had other people spot their their family members I have yet to spot any of mine uh, there was one time I thought I sh for sure saw my brother and uh, looked at it and you know uh, in the next picture he's talking to somebody that's obviously not my mother or brother you know any of the rest of the family so it was a real doppelganger sort of thing but uh no keep looking i keep thinking somewhere in twenty five thousand pictures i'm going to see myself in the back staring at something in awe so <laughs> let me bring up the photo the movies here and i will uh see we see if i can get this going here one second do people see the movies yes okay yes. I'm make it full screen so people should see it full screen now, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, these are just a bunch of random home movies, uh, eight millimeters. Uh, the first 10 minutes of the reel I was looking at this morning were New York City and the uh, um, Rockettes and all sorts of things, but we, we jumped in the fair. And uh, you wish you had sound in these things because she's probably telling you, stop it, stop it, don't do that. But this is the sort of thing I thought people might get a kick out of. You see the Johnson sign and all the uh, you know photos, but you don't see it moving around. And we'll, we'll see you know the uh, air filter on the Chrysler motors. Boy, this guy's moving fast. Uh, you know, there's just so many things that move that you don't realize it during the uh, yeah. you know, the still photos. <laughs> Oops. Uh, seasickness pills or motion pills are available at the front desk. <laughs> <laughs> I should have taken a drama mean. Oh, I tell you, my son, we gave, let him use the video camera one time we were taking the train ride through Wales. And uh, he was a master of the whip pen uh, <clears throat> of photography. And when we finally got home, we put it up on the big screen TV in the living room, started to watch it, and it literally gave me motion, uh, uh, you know, illness watching his, his photography. So since then, we have banned him from being the family photographer. <laughs> it's a dog. They had sled dogs at the Alaska Pavilion, huh? huh? Yeah, hang on. I never knew, for example, they had live burrows at the Alaska Pavilion. They just <laughs> have never shown up in any of the pictures. Ampha cars. This needs the sound of a projector in the background. Yeah, click, 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 click. <laughs> mm -hmm, exactly. When we were watching them demolish the aquacade, all those tires were stored in there. 
right now, this is construction footage, by the way. You may have noticed it was 34 degrees. Uh, they had all these little sheds around the uh, uh, area for the crews to go in and warm up during the time that they were uh, uh, building it. So there's the New York State Pavilion going up, mm -hmm. transportation and travel. Luminaires waiting to be put out. Dog objecting to something. Look at all that steel work, huh? Just think what these buildings cost. Mobile, Greyhound. Where do you get these movies? Do people say, hey, I don't want my home movies anymore here? <laughs> yeah, you know, that, that's really interesting you asked that. There was a, a while back, I, somebody was advertising uh, a lot of home uh, movies, um, you know, on, uh, on eBay. I bought it. And there were all these, uh, there were a couple of uh, things of uh, the fair, but they had all these other pictures of, um, you know, every uh, Christmas, the family waiting the stairs to come down and uh, open their Christmas packages. And I felt bad that, uh, you know, I had all their memories. So they were in the little yellow boxes and it had a guy's name on it. And I went online and looked and the guy had died, but it was an unusual name. And I found uh, one of the sons living in Washington, D.C., and I got in touch with him and said, hey, I ended up with your family's home movies. I don't know if you'd like them back. And he said, no, I have no interest in them. Um, my brother might. Um, so I wrote to the brother and he said, uh, you know, I, I said, I'd like to you know, send you your home movies, no charge. But, you know, if you could just send me back the postage, I'd appreciate it. And I said, yeah, OK, if you want to send them to him and never heard from him again. And I figured that must have <laughs> been a family of real unhappy childhood, you know, because if yeah. somebody called me up, and I said, do you want a picture of you and your mom and your dad in your home movies for 30 years? Man, I'd be jumping at it. Yeah. Well, you know, it depends on their family life, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So here we are on the AMF monorail. A little blurry there, unfortunately. Mine's not running. I'm still hoping, Bill, that you know, in, in, among these movies here, you'll end up having my dad's movies, which I have not been able to find. I've got all of his stills, but I can't find his movies from the years of the fair. So maybe by some weird circumstance, you end up with them, and then I'll jump out of my seat. Well, you know, I've, this past week, I've been doing a massive cleanup project in the garage, and I found the box with all my family's home movies, <clears throat> excuse me, in it. And I had transferred one reel uh, of them and I've got all these others and I've got the equipment here to transfer it in high def at home. These were all transferred in standard definition and I need to get to it because I want to see if there, I know we have pictures of uh, my family at Freedom Land. Uh, I don't know mm -hmm. what, if we have movies of the, the fair or not. I'm, I'm dying to look in it and see. What are you using to transfer them, Bill? It's called a Retro 8 as a, a little, it does a, uh, frame by frame capture and then it reassembles all these still frames into a uh, uh, into a film, but it, it captures it at uh, HD resolution. Hmm. It, is there any way to adjust the um, aspect ratio so that the picture is a little wider like the, like the original eight millimeter um, aspect ratio so that everything isn't like squished skinny the way it is right now? I don't know uh, how the guy transferred it to be honest with you. Um, and, and in the video, it's just playing the file back exactly as it is. I don't have any option that I know of to change the uh, oh. aspect ratio. But let me look here real quick. Video. Premiere will do that, I believe. And uh, if not, After Effects would. Here. Uh, let's just say the program I'm playing in. So let's see. Yeah, I... but that means that they all have to be loaded up and edited and exported again. But yeah. If you, if you select 4 3 instead of square. It's just going to stretch it. It's not going to open well, it up. Right now it's squished, but I, what we'd like is to unsquish it. Ah! The, the oh, gems here look like a circle, though, not like an oval. Yeah, so now it's. That didn't make it better. No. Uh, You're doing 4 3 the other direction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. 4 3. Let's see what 1 1 is. Oh, boy. We're going narrow and narrow, aren't we? <laughs> it's a tall world after all. <laughs> <laughs> 
Huh. Maybe I want to pause for a moment. <laughs> I'm going to pause. I don't know how much it would change. So let's see. This video says it is 16 to 10. That's a little better. Here we go. Oh, yeah, much better. Yeah, okay. Closer to real life. Hey, wouldn't we all love to have one of those strollers, huh? What happened to all of those? We only have found two of them so far. Uh, the guys in the American Picker show found one, and I forget the uh, uh, another one of the restoration shows. And I helped them with the pictures so they could match the colors and try to get the, um, uh, what you call it, um, decal placement. Sorry, some of these are blurrier than I remembered. We, like I said, we had them playing on a uh, background at a monitor, you know, just as people wandered through the exhibits at the um, the Biggie Johnson and Johnson. If anybody spots themselves, let me know. Tower of the Four Winds. That was real quick. Bill, we thought they pulled a car out of the Aquacade, um, but it ended up being an, an old baby carriage. Oh, really? <laughs> For a moment, I thought it was one of the uh, the U drive cars. It, it was crushed, oh, so it looked yeah, it looked like a uh, it looked like one of the cars, but it ended up. And the guy asked the construction guy asked me if I wanted it. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> I'm looking at these videos, and the picture quality is. Out of focus, overexposed, jerky. It's very, very hard to decipher what it is. Is that the way it is in your screen? Uh, I'm not saying it real jerky. I can pull it up on another uh, monitor just, here and see it. Just so far out of focus, it's hard to see what I'm looking at. Yeah, your picture on the thumbnail is nice and clear. Some of them are definitely out of focus. And for that, I apologize. And when I get the time machine set, I will go back and see what I can do to fix it. Actually, I think the picture is remarkably good. I'm using a, a brand new laptop instead of the ancient desktop that I usually use. And I think that makes a big difference because when you've had video in the past on my ancient desktop, it's real jerky and delayed and everything is uh, hard to watch. Here, it's actually what, remarkably good. What, phone, what phones were the kid listen, was the kid listening to? Good question. That was uh, 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 Oklahoma. Let me just pause uh -huh. for a second. Yeah, uh, they had a, a panel. Matter of fact, we're going to see uh, some movies of the Oklahoma uh, uh, diorama in there later on, I believe. But they had uh, phones that you would hold up to your ear, and they would tell you what was happening uh, there on the, uh, uh, the, the thing, you know, the stockyards and the hydroelectric plants and all the rest of it. So um, I'm just opening up here another. Um, Windows, so I can watch this myself and see how it looks on the other end. But yeah, that's the sort of thing that's uh, kind of neat to uh, to see that uh, you know it gets captured. And let me mute myself here. You back up the video about ten seconds. I think we spotted those mystery things that we've been looking at on your website that look like nozzles, kind oh, of bright silver nozzles. Just a second, one. Let me just mute this other laptop I just fired up here. There we go. All right, so back it up about 10 seconds, huh? It looked like the, the top of a pole, there were those mystery things we thought were nozzles. There's the phones again. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not me. <laughs> It's amazing to see the number of men in suits. Oh, goodness. Yeah, absolutely. People dressed so differently back then. It was just astonishing. You know, uh, you, you get pictures of the men in suit and women are wearing white gloves. You know, uh, it, it's a whole different world from, uh, from what we got today. My mother wore white gloves. Yeah, go to Disneyland in a dress. <laughs> yeah. 
My mom used to wear high heels whenever we traveled, including on airplanes. Uh, and she, she would wear something like this too. I, I, see, I real quick, Don, sorry to interrupt you, but the dinosaur, you didn't realize in all the still pictures that his mouth moves. And they were uh, mentioning at the uh, uh, park where they were in Texas today that unfortunately over the years, somebody had removed his mouth mechanism so he no longer menaces people chomping away like that. The mouth mechanism was removed before the trailer tour. Oh, was so, it? Yeah, way back in 65, I think. Make it lighter for the tra uh, transportation? They just didn't want the motors. The Triceratops and the Brontosaurus were uh, also motorized, and they went back to Jonah's studios, had the motors taken out, the various parts uh, fiberglassed in place, and then went out on the trailers. Oh, mm. great. Thanks for the info. <laughs> He did saw, eat the, that group saw the there. Chrysler <laughs> turbine car there a minute ago. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. one, of, one of those went up for sale this week. That's yeah. a rare thing. Yeah. Only Jay Leno has one in this area in the museum, the Peterson Museum. Peterson has one, yeah. Did the dinosaurs make noise? Enough. What was that? Did Kendall? the dinosaurs make any noise? Did they? They, they had the uh, speakers around there, and I don't remember if they had uh, simulated stuff, but they had a narration going on about them. Oh, I see. I've got some of the tapes, some of the narration tapes. Love to hear them. So now we're off on the Magic Skyway, Bob's Gurr, uh, you know, wheel system propelling it along. Chrysler, these are all the flags where Chrysler did uh, business. This is great stuff. A lot of things I haven't seen here. General Motors, devour the rainforest at one end of the machine and pump out a highway at the other end. It is jerkier on the laptop that I'm looking at. On the uh, desktop where I'm playing it back, I've got a night. It, it seems to come and go in different uh, speeds. Here's the fountains of the fairs. Rheingold off there. Coming on into the fair for a day. Look at all those people. We'll all have to have fun. Aren't we all jealous of them? <laughs> Color TV exhibit. Yep. See yourself on Color TV. You know, today when everybody has a color TV in their pocket, it's hard to imagine what a thrill that was for people to go see it. Oregon. He's up in Lake George, New York. Oh, we're over at, uh, is this Simmons? No, this is, uh, uh, what you call the paper company. Oh, that's why you can't have nice things. People break them. <laughs> this guy looks like he's determined to climb on everything. <laughs> he probably made a, uh, what you call it, uh, untethered ascent of the uh, New York State Pavilion on the outside. But it is interesting when you see people, you know, do things like climb and stuff like that. And when you're trying to figure out what you can put, where you can put it, and you know, can anybody possibly reach it or damage it? It's uh, amazing how they, uh, well, it goes an escorter real nice and fast. Uh, you know, whatever you have to figure people will do that, they'll, they'll do that and worse. Hey, Bill. Yeah. Uh, do people, um, I'm, I'm sure they do, but do people steal, <laughs> steal things from Disney World? Oh, yeah. And yeah, people try to do that all the time. I was on Small World at Disneyland one day, just riding it after work or whatever. And somebody stood up in front of me and tried to pull a mask off of a uh, wall right where you went through a narrow tunnel. So um, he, he, uh, he got ejected and, uh, you know, um, uh, t he, he did not have a good day after that. He was rather surprised to have a Disney employee two seats behind him in the boat. But people do uh, stuff uh, all the the, uh, the time like that. And that's why you have to put everything at you know more than an arm's length. Now a lot of the rides you have things like pressure sensitive mats 
or uh, cameras that when uh, people jump out of a boat and try to steal the gold on the pirate ride, an alarm goes off and it's, it's dealt with. I understand they used to like to take the apple out of uh, the witch's hand on Snow White. Yep, and the uh, key out of the dog's mouth on uh, pirates. Well, that's a reach. Not if you jump out and run over and uh, they, they would attach the key to the dog's jaw and then they would just rip the jaw right off the dog. Wow. They get caught, right? Oh, usually so, yeah. But, you know, teenagers and they think it's great fun and they don't think about getting caught. And the next thing they know, they're in Disney jail waiting <laughs> for mommy and daddy to come and get them. And uh, they, the Disney takes them seriously. I'll never forget, I was riding. Go ahead. Now, I'll never forget, I was riding Living Seas back when it was Living Seas, getting ready to, uh, to get on the Omnimover, and it came to a stop, and the ride operator told me that someone had probably climbed out of the Omnimover. I said, people do that? And he looked at me in the eye, and he said, sir, you would not. Oh, no, you wouldn't believe what people do. Here's the weirdest one I can remember. Let me just stop this one second. The weirdest one I can remember was at Space Mountain in Florida. You would, again, talk about see yourself on color TV. And uh, you would go through it, and there was a tape delay, just like at the, the World's Fair, so you could end up seeing yourself on it. And we would sit down what's called DAX, the, the audio central area down in the basement underneath Fantasy Lane. You could pull up anything on any of the monitors, and you would watch you know, the different things. And you'd see all the people seeing themselves on color TV. And they had a, a special collection of videos where young ladies would come by and bare their breasts in front of the cameras there. And they announced <laughs> that the person running the ride would say something like, very nice, would you like a copy of that? And you would see people turn the most incredible shade of color as they literally <laughs> ran out the door for the rest of it. <laughs> I've heard that on, on Splash Mountain, they, you, women would do that. They'd pull up their shirts and expose yeah. themselves for the picture yeah uh, at uh, uh, disney it's known as flash mountain and uh they had a whole uh thing that, where somebody put up a bunch of pictures were captured off it on a website and disney got upset and sued it was a real mess but yeah there's a whole big thing where people do that oh here's the, the disney characters real quick <laughs> seven dwarves no Look at the Indians. Yeah, you wonder why they're in the escorter. <laughs> We're at the New England State. Somebody's doing one of their performances. The wheels on the bus go round and round. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> We're in Mexico now. Oh, Aztec. Aztec dancers. Yeah. Well, maybe some other kind of Indian. I don't know. I think these are the, the, the pole the guys that came down on the pole. Well, they, they will go up the pole, but they did a big dance act at the beginning of it, and here are the guys going up. Oh. I'm surprised that little kid is right behind them. <laughs> yeah, these guys were huge at hemispheres later. <laughs> yeah, they were real popular, the same group, and they're still performing today. Although somehow I bet it's your grandchildren not the same guys. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. Oh, it gets better. Yeah, I bet. This is the first footage I've ever seen of this there. Oh, look, they're going to sit up there and. Just wait. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. I'll come down. <laughs> Here they go. Oh, my God. They, they moved pretty quick, too. I mean, as this thing, as they went down, they really picked up speed on it. Why would anybody want to do that? Yeah. And then next week, the Ed Sullivan Show. Yeah. How was your day <laughs> at the office, dear? <laughs> God. Not good. They ran out of drama meet again. Yeah. Off to Thailand. Oh, well, so much for that. Beautiful pavilion. It really was. It was really uh, gorgeous. And we're going to go see was, the dolphins. Bill, is that the gold leaf you were talking about? Yep. Yep. 
And this was a big thing for it's hard to believe now because it almost seemed like every theme park for a while had to have a dolphin or porpoise show. But this was a, a, a big thing in New York, you know, that I uh, actually have dolphins. You think about it, I don't, does anyone remember what year uh, Flipper was on TV? I don't remember if this was the same time or before it. But uh, wow, to see a dolphin doing a, a you know, acting, you had all these, you had steam seals before it's, you know, we had them at the Prospect Park Zoo or others. But uh, dolphins was a, was a big thing to have them at the fair. Somebody's got the TV or something on, you can hear it as you can mute yourself. If I can find him. Uh, he muted. Okay. And again, it's interesting, as I've mentioned with uh, pictures, you know, you had to figure out how many pictures you had on a roll. You had to, uh, you know, uh, ration your uh, pictures and, you know, then go get them developed. The same thing with movies. If you remember, we had these little 50 foot reels, ran about four minutes. So you had to carry it for the rest of the day if you had more than one. Belgian Village, the Giles or Gills dancers. Uh, so again, it's interesting to me that, you know, somebody was so enamored on particular things that they use their little 50 foot reel to, uh, you know, uh, capture some of it. There's the bells up in the bell tower that got stolen. They stole the bells? Yeah, the day the World's Fair closed, uh, somebody went up into the bell tower, cut the cables, dropped the bells to the ground, threw them in a truck and drove them out of there and stole the bells to melt them down. <clears throat> What do, you, what do you think those bells weighed? Uh, I don't know. I'm sure it was a lot. I'm sure when they came down, they made a hell of a bang, too. That Flipper. carousel mentioned is now up in Montreal. You can still go ride it up at the former Expo 67 site. Flipper, 1964 to 67. Yep. Yep. Thanks, Beth. How many people went to the Belgian village considering it was an extra fee? I think I went maybe twice. Probably once or twice, I guess. Yeah, it was kind of neat to see it. But uh, again, it was money. So I could use that money for something else on another, uh, another day. Did you have to go into the village to get the uh, Belgian waffle? No. They started selling them there, but after a while, they sold them everywhere. So I don't know what they're filming or doing up there. He's got a tripod up on that uh, cherry picker. But no, they started selling them all throughout the fair. You know, as I showed in other pictures, you could get Belgian waffles at the Caribbean Pavilion. You could get them in the International Village. They were all over the place. <laughs> so here's the diorama at Oklahoma. Again, this was motorized, so you see the cattle all moving around. Wow. Those kids would be in those little white phones. He's out golfing, having a great day. And the uh, explanation of those little white uh, phones were telling you all the wonders of uh, Oklahoma. Joey's playground. <laughs> <laughs> if you look closely, he's got a shovel underneath. <laughs> yeah, I, I've, I've hit a couple of shovels there in, uh, in past years. Thanks, Mom. I like the sugar. <laughs> the Long Island Railroad. The train is still out on uh, Suffolk County, and you can ride it today. <laughs> Old railroad development train. I tell you, I felt like a kid. I went out there and rode it. Oh, this this engine cab is at uh, Oyster Bay at the Oyster Bay Railroad Museum, and they're just repainting it now with all the. Uh, New York's uh, Long Island Railroad colors. Um, the model railroad. This is at the Long Island Railroad. Let me stop this real quick. That train going around there was an American flyer train. It was painted in the colors of the Long Island Railroad. Uh, my college roommate's father was the vice president of passenger operations for the Long Island Railroad. So after the fair ended, they asked who wanted anything and, and his dad took home the train. 
So uh, Bill had to train. He was set up at Christmas time and that. And then he went off to uh, uh, Germany in the uh, army, came back and he asked his mom, uh, where's the train? And she said, oh, we were cleaning out the house to sell it. We got rid of the train, we put it out of the curb. Somebody took it away. And Bill mm -hmm. was absolutely crestfallen and, you know, uh, just absolutely horrified. Well, it turns out the guy that runs the Oyster Bay Railroad Museum now has one of the sets of trains that somebody had gotten it and, you know, things pass from person to person, sale to sale. So uh, the guy now lives in Baldwin and uh, uh, runs the Oyster Bay Railroad Museum, but he was able to res uh, rescue one of these uh, trains. Uh, there, were, there were two of them. And we don't know where the other one went, but it's nice to know that it still survived. But what were the odds that, you know, it, it passed through that many hands and somebody re recognized that they had a, uh, uh, you know, a World Serum legacy still, uh, still around. He was lucky to get it. Very, yes. That running Indian thing, was that a trading post? Trading post at the Arizona, or New Mexico pavilion, yeah. And uh, they still run those uh, in the state. You can date, by the way, this is India, and you can date uh, when some pictures are taken by when people broke the heads off those uh, ceramic horse type figures. British Lion Pub. No, I was just curious, because that looked like the logo of some of the trading posts on Route 66. Yeah, it, it looks like some of them, but uh, yeah, it was uh, run by something that a family that had them out there, and they built that one for the fair. <laughs> now everybody needs to go ooh ah and bang, and, and somebody can simulate explosions. GE you could only tell that because if you know the light <laughs> pattern for the escalators. So like I said, today was just definitely a day for uh, World's Fair nerds, but I figured the thing of motion adds a whole new vitality to uh, you know what you're looking at. Like I said, these shows were spectacular at night. You can go to my site, download the music for them and uh, go along, but the founds were magnificent. You, know, the, you can see how the colors are changing on them. Uh, they had massive firework shows every night. Chrysler, you can see the air filter turning. Now, what the hell is she doing at the fair? It beats me. She's sunbathing? Yeah, she was sunbathing, just in a bathing suit, lying out in the sun on the grass. We're going up the Sky Streak elevator. Been a while since anybody's done that, huh? Just a side note, I checked that logo. It was indeed Boland's Trading Post. That was a big Roots Fair chain, World Fair chain, or yeah. Roots chain. We're up on the top of the observation deck now. It's funny when you end up with something, there can't be too many movies of people on the sky street streaks going up, so. Fun, fun when you come across something sort of different. And you can figure this is probably 65 because the Belgian village, well, actually the little fat, fat building still under construction there. So maybe this is the uh, end part of 64. We could see more if we see, oh yeah, it's gotta be 64. There's the uh, circus is still there in town. Busy day over in the parking lot. When do they have the last World's Fair? Well, there's another one coming up this year in Dubai. It was supposed to be last year and it got delayed because of uh, coronavirus. So it's, the last one in the US was 84 in New Orleans. The last one in North America was Vancouver in 86. But they've been having them overseas very steadily uh, uh, in you know other countries, just not uh, North America. I know that. I'm sure the New Yorkers are enjoying the light traffic.
those are uh, uh, music notes. Is that a music pavilion or? It was uh, trying to get you to come in for the musical entertainment we had at night. Oh. We're on the AMF monorail now. There goes one of the other ones in the opposite direction. Bill? Uh, yeah, Joey. Did you say that uh, the AMF monorails were um, were uh, remote controlled? They no one was no one was actually driving them. Yeah, they were all on a computerized dispatch system out of the uh, station. They had a uh, fake set of controls up at front, and the only thing it would do would be to operate an air horn. And uh, it was interesting that people started getting so nervous that these things were automated that they put the uh, tour guides up there that would, uh, you know, explain what was going on. But it was uh, all automated. Now, when they put the uh, Expo Express system in, in Montreal, same sort of thing it was all automated. But uh, people were scared to death of having a computerized train. And the union didn't want their uh, jobs eliminated. So they put a person in the cab at the Expo Express in Montreal. And his only job was to push the button to open the doors. But yeah, the whole thing was uh, totally automated. There's Hawaii down below. That's my dream job is to uh, be a monorail driver. Ah, Joey is a one track mind. Oh, you'll hear all week. <laughs> yeah, sadly, Disney World is going to automate all their monorails too, so there'll be no more monorail pilots down there. I think they pretty much have done that. They still have the pilots in there for safety reasons. I think they pretty much automated them all. They don't. I was going to the... say they'd have to have somebody in there. <laughs> Well, technically they don't, but from a liability point of view, the, the major thing you want somebody in there for is if you have to do an emergency evacuation of the monorails. Make sure people don't take the seats home. <laughs> Amphitheater. There's Wonder World had to be 64. Yeah. yeah very early because they, they closed very quickly. Yep. The guy was probably had his camera auto focused on the glass of the uh, the window. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Actually, here he's not focused on anything. <laughs> the monorail station. Okay, Kodak. I am going to. I have the editing equipment. I am going to edit. You know, uh, down my hundreds of hours of stuff into you know stuff that is better quality. But I just wanted to grab this because I had it uh, handy. Genuine Hair in the Gate, Vintage, 1964. Belgian Village outside. Oh, look at this real quick. Uh, go back real quick on this. Look at the street light there. When they put in the street lights, they uh, realized they didn't have the uh, room there to put a whole luminaire in because it would bang into the wall of the Belgian Village. So they had to chop half the cubes off. So it's kind of interesting when you go through the, uh, the manuals of how many of these things they had and where they were. Some of the ones along the perimeter of the Belgian village are very lopsided because you can see how close the uh, base of it is to the, uh, to the building. Hey, Bill, do you have the commercial um, videos or the commercial movies of the fair on your site or? I don't uh, on there. Uh, I have most of the copies of them. I'm uh, actually uh, working with somebody to try to get more movies. What I try to do is on my site, just put the stuff there that you can't find on YouTube or whatever. But I, I do have all the uh, castle movies and some of the others that I've got to finish digitizing and put up. Okay, no, because I have five or six if you need them. So. Oh, great. Yeah, I, I, get in touch with me. I'd love to get them from you. Okay. Thank you. I forgot to say hi to Carol. Hi, Carol. Hi, Joey. <laughs> Be nice. We had some music to go along with. Anybody want to hum us a lively tune? Most people probably know it, but we're in the New York State Pavilion, the tent of tomorrow, and again, a very popular area that uh, all sorts of different folk groups have come in and perform. 
they're, they're out doing dancing on the Texaco map. Looks like a tremendous line dance. This would be the nice thing. If you could get the pavilion restored and local community groups could use it for things, it'd be a you know, real pleasure to have uh, things like this occur all summer long again. Anybody happen to know, uh, recognize from the costumes of the dance where these performers might be from? Germany. They look Teutonic. Yeah, it did. Next performance at, you can go and see the movie inside the theaterama. Who of us did not sit along the unisphere and rest your heels for a few minutes after a long day at the fair, huh? So did Disney put in the Skyway? No, it was a separate company. It was oh. uh, same system that Disney used. Uh, it looked like Disney. <laughs> but uh, it, was, it was done by a, a separate company and then it moved over to New Jersey after the fair. Giant gorilla outside the uh, circus pen. Vatican Pavilion. There was actually a real gorilla at the fair. Yeah. Um, I think in Africa, right, Bill? Well, no, if they had him at the circus uh, uh, tent, that was the sign outside telling you to come on in and see him. So yeah. uh, they had the, a real gorilla there, yeah. I hope they, I hope he was treated okay. Uh, yeah, he was, uh, what you call it, uh, okay as far as I know. Excuse me, I'm going to mute myself one second. Well, I, I'll take, and I'm doing something. Can I call you back? And he's gone. So, so much for answering the call. Huh. Silent in his short pants, collar cardigan, and white shirt. Yeah, somehow the white socks and shorts and the red sweater go well together. <laughs> One of our ever-present nuns. You know, it's a shame this guy, whoever it was, took this whole thing of movies and it looked like he had that hair the whole time. Or maybe the transfer company did it, I don't know. Is this all one person's uh, movie? No, there's a bunch of them added together. Again, back to India. I think the most, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Don. Oh no, go ahead, Joy. I was, I think the most incredible thing uh, especially for people that live around the fairgrounds is that this is this is Flushing Meadow Park. This is Queens. Yeah. Yeah, you post a picture every now and then of Vintage Queens group in, uh, you know, like the Belgian village. And you say, oh, this is uh, downtown, you know, uh, Flushing, New York. People, it can't be. <laughs> <laughs> It occurs to me this may be the first World's Fair with so much color home footage. I don't think other, you know, the technology was available much before this. Well, no, you had it at uh, what you call it uh, uh, ever since uh, 
uh, the 58. I've got a bunch of movies of uh, Expo 58, um, you know, from uh, from Brussels, uh, certainly Seattle. Uh, six oh, that's right, Seattle. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, about I've, Seattle. Got, I've got boxes and boxes of those for my someday list. Now, sure, professional video editors like my friend Mike Clark are probably tearing their hair out of the quality of some of the footage, but it's, uh, you know, all you can show is what you got, right? That's you can right. see the light. You know, amateur camera work to me is always something to watch because they're always panning the camera. They never find the shot. <laughs> <laughs> like this guy back and forth, right? Yeah. Yeah, and if you have a skyscraper, they always have to start at the bottom, go up to the top, and come back to the bottom again. They get it confused with a paintbrush. What's that, Tom? They get it confused with a paintbrush or a paint roller. Yeah. <laughs> I once knew somebody who, believe it or not, when they shot a skyscraper, turned the camera sideways because they wanted to get it all in. Ah! Well, that's the way people shoot with their damn phones today, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So these guys, the, the Los Voladores, they had to work even uh, up to the darkness. I, I cannot that. imagine climbing up and doing this myself. <laughs> I was watching some old video footage of Disney World I shot some 25 years ago. I wanted to walk up and slap myself. I was in love with the zoom function. Oh, yeah. constantly zooming in and out. Oh. Yeah, I, I think we've all shot things that we uh, look after and go, oh boy. This must have been a popular thing to take a video of. <laughs> it was usually popular. Mexico had a great uh, position facing right towards the Unisphere. And uh, they came out and did the show about 10 times a day. And it attracted huge crowds to the point where the roads would totally block up. People staring at it. We showed last week, uh, uh, you know, shots of the last day of the fair and one of the last performances they did. And you couldn't have, you know, slipped a piece of paper between the, the crowds with that jam. Jeez. But again, These guys are from Mexico? Yeah. This is the sort of thing, you go to a fair, where are you ever going to see something like this before? You know, they certainly didn't have it in my hometown. All right, looks like we're at the top of the observation deck again. I'm sure the neighbors love the last flight of the last helicopter. There's somebody with Don's zoom lens. <laughs> Too close, back off, back off. <laughs> Bill, are, are the fountains of the Unisphere, are they able to shoot that high still? Yep, still could. Just dialed it down for safety reasons. Yeah. Do the uh, fountains for the Unisphere have any kind of pattern like they did? Uh, at the fair or the, are they today, no, today they just run them at a fixed height you know about three feet off the ground and just stays on the whole time they don't have that undulating pattern that uh, went around and up and down at the various levels i wonder if they could still land choppers on top of that building now that's just kind uh, of they built another yeah. on top of it uh, so now we're going down the sky street there's another addition they built up to it, so it's totally uh, unusable for a hell for it. They they have a wedding chapel on top and a and a little uh, cocktail room. Hmm. One of the hosts there, you can see him real briefly, putting people in the elevators.
So here, Mike, you don't mind them uh, panning at this point, I hope. I took my Dramamine a while ago. Well, apparently <laughs> moving elevator, that makes sense, you know. It's a pity we lost those. Yeah, they're, they're gone. Um, I think Jim Brown was telling me that they're gone now, right, Jim? Uh, yeah, they are gone. Uh, we don't know where they went. I think they were just thrown away with all the other construction debris that they collected from doing the demolition over there. Yeah. They were in pretty sad shape. Yeah, they, they sure yeah. were. Yeah, they were. Although John Pirro got a few parts off them, so they're not totally gone. Oh, good. The control panel, uh, some light fixtures, a couple odds and ends of, of stuff off them. Well, I heard they were planning on restoring them. They said, oh, damn, the control panel's gone. We'll never be able to recreate it to throw the rest of it. <laughs> well, I think John would give them give it back if they if he knew for sure that they were really going to build an exhibit. Yeah. You mean it's not in Joey's backyard? <laughs> <laughs> One's in Joey's backyard. The other's in John Pirro's backyard. Okay. <laughs> you don't want to know what's in our backyards. <laughs> I tell you, we're dealing with a, a problem in uh, my town of a quarter that uh, is biblical proportions. And if you guys ever think you've collected too much stuff, I can send you pictures of this guy's house. And uh, you know, next time your significant other says, why do you have so much stuff? I can show him this guy's picture and say, be glad I, it's, this is not me. It's, it's, is that the guy in North Hills? Uh, Granada Hills, yeah. yeah. And we were out there that yesterday. On TV. Yeah, I was the one that arranged to get it on TV because all the city departments were basically putzing around not doing anything. So I said, we'll put this on channel two. I bet it gets attention. Whoa, did it ever. So almost, we were out there yesterday. It's now an industrial strength uh, roll off, you know, bin, you know, one of these things inside of a semi truck and the family is putting stuff in it that they, in, in two days, they've got a uh, space about the size of my uh, kitchen table cleared. And that's the first time people have seen dirt in the front yard in three years. But what's the guy's deal? What's his mental deal? He's done this before. He had another house. He did the exact same thing. He's got a hoarding mentality. And uh, he's always looking for treasure. But what he does is he lets people go to storage lockers. You know, all the stuff you see on storage wars. People buy stuff from the storage lockers, take it to his house, sorts it out in the front yard, and then he lets them leave the stuff there as he's going through it. And of course, it gets ruined in the rain and everything else. And about five, six times a year, he calls the Department of Sanitation that does a bulky item pickup, and they take stuff away. So he basically runs an illegal junkyard and charges people to uh, you know, dump their junk in his front yard. Um, the backyard is even worse. You've probably seen the helicopter footage or the drone yeah. footage. It's, it's horrific. Uh, Bill, so, could you back, back up to that night shot? Oh, I went back too far. This goes real quick. Back here? There was one of uh, a pavilion with some bars across the window or something. Well, there's the bell system pavilion. With the lights across the uh, the bottom of it. Let's see what else we might see. Where did where did they shoot the fireworks from? Was it from the middle among the fountains, or was there a separate um, launching area? It was the middle of the fountains. What they did, we showed pictures of it in prior weeks. That's a tidal river, the uh, Flushing River. So they would close the gates of the water going into the fountain and it would all go out the other side uh, at the, on, on a tidal basis and a wooden walkway uh, pops up. That's the power of light. And they uh, would go out during the daytime with hand carts, load up all the mortars that were in the, uh, hidden in the, the uh, metal framework. That, the, that's, uh, that's it. Oh, tower, that's the power of light. Power of light. Yeah, yeah, you can okay. see how they pulsated and changed uh, color on it. So they would load up all the fireworks and then uh, uh, open up the gate. The water would come rushing in, flood the uh, wooden walkway and you wouldn't see it. And then there was a control panel for all this over near equitable insurance. 
that they uh, would uh, do the uh, the lighting of the mortars from and play back the uh, the music. Is uh, Gary Holmes still on? Gary, Gary? you mean? Uh, Gary, oh, great, I'm great. sorry. Uh, you've got the uh, Ben Franklin figure, don't you, from the uh, Tower of Light? Nope. Then that's I'm Gary, thinking of Gary Holmes. That's I'm Gary Holmes. Greg. Yeah. I'm thinking of the wrong Holmes. Yeah, Gary wrote them a letter and said, I'd like to get a souvenir of the fair. And they said, okay, how would you like you know, Ben Franklin? So uh, amazingly, he's got it. He's got some great stuff in his basement. One of the stars right here. the Astral Fountain and all sorts of fun stuff. Hey, Bill, did the... For those of you... Okay, good. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Don. I was going to say, this is Cliff, I was going to say, for those of you in the New York area, at the uh, the Terrace on the Park runs two wedding fairs a year to draw, get you to try and buy wedding products. But for five bucks, you can go in, tour the whole place, get up on the roof, take all the shots you want, and there's free food. You just have to pretend you're getting married. <laughs> <laughs> Works for me. <laughs> but it was a great way to tour the, uh, the, the, the transportation building. Back when I worked for the uh, Bell System in New York, we were right down near where all the cruise ships came in uh, for the uh, you know people on the west side. And they had a thing for 50 cents, you could buy a ticket and go on board and the 50 cents went to the uh, money for the Longshoremen's Union. So we would get on board and the guys that worked there full time, I did it as a summer job, the guys that worked there full time had a great thing. We'd go on board the ship and you'd go into somebody's going away party and you'd go right for the food line, just start stuffing yourself with all the food you could. And then people would come up and say, hey, I don't think I know you. He said, no, I don't think we've met. You know, keep eating as much as you can. And, uh, you know, people say, are you part of the, uh, the, 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 the Morris party? And you go, uh, Morris? No, we're, we're looking. I thought this was the Vento party. Then you run down to the next room, go into there and just start eating like crazy. And we would do it week after week after week. It, was, it worked out just great. When we were planning our wedding, when we were planning our wedding, we went up there and we got a we got a tour. Uh, there was no food though. Did people see the sign at the GE? It lasted for just a second. Curb your stroller. <laughs> Is that what that said? I couldn't quite catch. That. Yeah, yeah. They wanted people to put their strollers up there so they didn't wander or roll down the street. The uh, first time I saw it, I thought it said "curb your dog," and I said that doesn't make sense. <laughs> The curb your stroller definitely has to be a uh, collector's item. Can't be too many of those around. Boy, this guy's a master of the quick cut shot. Yeah, this one is. <laughs> Again, you had a 50 foot, well, that's a real quick one. You had a 50 foot reel, three, you know, four, three, four, I think three and a half minutes, right? Mm -hmm. This guy likes signs. Hey, I, I, I made no pretense we were going to be looking at Academy Award worthy footage today. I kind of like it. It's fun. Yeah, I do too. I feel like we should all have a giant bowl of popcorn. <laughs> Belgian waffles. Oh, Belgian waffles, yeah. There's a waffle place not too far from me. Maybe I'm done with this, we'll go out for lunch. Country Didn't you farm. say that somebody has the recipe somewhere with some restaurant that they bought it? They, the family still serves them every year at the New York State Fair up at the, uh, upstate New York. Every year they bring out the old uh, recipes and waffles and still makes them. I've heard so much about them. I never got to go to the fair of it. I've always wanted to have one of those waffles. Oh, they were addictive. And the, the thing was, if you got them with the powdered sugar, you could see for the rest of the day who had had one, uh, you know, because of all the sugar all over you. So uh, Florida, the flamingos we talked about, having to get shipped back to Florida, where I think they may have housed them at the Bronx Zoo in between seasons.
I look at this and I, I can't even get my dog to beg. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, she does a real good job of begging on her own, but to try to get her to shake, forget it. <laughs> Yes, yeah, it's, it's funny. We got her as a, a, a stray. She was a runaway. And you take them home, you never know, you know what you're going to get. And as amazingly, she was happily already potty trained and all the rest of it. But somebody had taught her, you know, bang, you're dead, roll over. And uh, she's got that trick down pat, but that appears to be the only one trick she was willing to, to learn. Some random views from the upper level of Florida. Oh, it's interesting. I went down to Florida years later and met this guy. It was down, still doing alligator wrestling down in the, in Florida. And uh, he ended up getting really bit bad by an alligator, not at the fair afterwards, but he had uh, great memories of working up at the fair. It was real, real fun to talk to him. Did he get his hand him. bitten off? <laughs> he got bit really badly. One of the alligators really went and, and did a job on him and almost killed him. Uh, again, Shit. not that fair. Years later, somewhere in the uh, 80s it happened, I believe. Uh, but he, uh, he he had a great time. You know, uh, he, he, he got a real kick out of it. I said, where'd you learn how to, you know, wrestle alligators? He said, oh, all the kids did it, you know. Um, <laughs> just what they did back, you know, where he lived. And so my father taught me how to do it. All the kids did it, so no big deal. But he said he had a great time, made a fortune, you know, uh, you know, uh, doing it, living up in New York. He had his apartment paid for by the uh, the state, and uh, he he had a really good time. Bill, was that tiki face on a tower at the Florida exhibit? Uh, I believe that was over at the Hawaii exhibit. I would have thought that. We're in Florida. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I think the guy bounces back and forth with, with stuff. Doesn't look like a big crowd that particular day. Every time I went, it was packed. And on a hot day, you try to get really down to the front, and they had big signs about splash zones, and you just waited to get splashed to get cooled off. The uh, state of Florida did a post fair, uh, you know, report, which is quite uh, voluminous on their activity at the fair. And they were extremely happy with the amount of uh, people that came to the shows and that they said they saw a noticeable uptick in uh, Florida tourism and requests from the New York in the tri-state area of people asking for uh, brochures and, you know, uh, travel information. So uh, they were very, very happy with the, uh, the results, which is why they expanded in 65 to go into the, uh, uh, the uh, water ski show. Hope you were speed reading and get that sign quick. Castillo Cross on Walker, I, I don't know what that was. It was a, a piece of memorabilia. We're inside the circus tent. This is really uh, the only footage I found inside the uh, circus. There was a uh, golden locket that's on display at the, uh, uh, what you call it, the, uh, the ship out there in the lake. Huh. Again, like the, the circus, circus was not a big success because you had to pay to go to it and you could go to any old circus any old time. Not anymore. <laughs> no, not anymore. Yeah, in retrospect, yeah. right? Yeah, it did look like the seats were all empty earlier when you got an audience shot. Yeah, it reminds me, I was watching a Laurel and Hardy movie the other day where the you know, audience was absolutely sparse and they uh, uh, decide they have to break up the circus and they end up, you know, the, the guy has no money to give him, so he gives him the circus gorilla. And uh, I was thinking of Joey when I was watching it, but uh, the audience <laughs> was about uh, this this busy. You know, 
guess it's used just under the net of a few people sitting there. They did have a uh, net. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> but that's the only footage I've come across that anybody has seen of the circus. So. Huh. Well, maybe it wasn't that unusual <laughs> then. Yeah, well, again, people just didn't go. There was a Barnum and Bailey I mean, day yeah. that day. Yeah. The tower was not moving at that, that particular day. We're looking out from the Pepsi area. Okay, everybody, who has the song in their head? <laughs> Small world. Do they have any shots of great moments with Mr. Lincoln? I don't believe so in this reel, no. It was, the lighting in there was so tough. You could see like in this, how bad the lighting is. The, the film at this time was very, very slow and you needed a lot of light. And without it, you, you just didn't get much. Like right here, the, you know, the jungle animals. Yeah. But I'll, still, I'll tell you, I bet when these people took this movie in 1964, and went home and showed it, you know, again, they're not looking at it, you know, like we look today for everything with high def and everything else. This is probably great memories, you know, and then I'm sure they were glad that they got it. It's as good as you could get with the technology of the time. Well, Someone yeah, on the they're going to transfer that to Anaheim, California. The chances of somebody living in New York that is on a limited income could not go all the way to California to see it. Oh, absolutely. So so having these would be great just movies someone someone on the site posted that when they were younger they were on acid and they uh they took the boat ride and were trying to climb up on the on the platform to take one of the dolls down i don't know if anybody has seen that posting i did yeah yeah so Apparently security got them. They must have gotten arrested. A little bit of 1970s nostalgia. <laughs> All of it. I thought you were going to say that they ended up in the Tomorrowland movie. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody know where we are right now? Denmark. You Denmark. mentioned this playground once in one of your presentations, but I don't know. Ah, uh, boy. Is it Denmark? What's that? Is it Denmark? No nope, fall of education. Oh. Yeah, those kids are up high. Too bad you could have won a valuable prize. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> So again, this whole area was a tidal lake. The uh, air, the ducks are right there. You can see the, the thing. They would close it off, would all drain out. They'd walk out, fill up the, uh, they turn off the fountains, obviously, load up the launchers. Then they would let the water back in, turn the fountains on during the day. And at night, the whole thing was the, uh, the big fireworks show. Bill, did they know where a lot of the fireworks, a lot of the mortars, their tra uh, trajectory, where they would end up landing? They pretty much went straight up and, you know, hopefully the wind, uh, you know, let stuff come back down. There was no specified blast zone that I'm aware of, you know, where they would rope it off and not let people go at night. Yeah. I love the fireworks shows at night. Uh, it was a real conundrum because did you go to the show, a uh, fireworks show, or did you try to get one last ride in on one of the good pavilions when everybody else was over to watch the, the fireworks? So, uh, you know, that was part of it, you know, because every most of the exhibits closed at 10 o'clock at night. So, um, you know, there was time to get one last ride in because the fireworks, I think, were at nine at night. But, uh, you know, the fireworks were so good. So you tended to try to, go over by the fireworks, watch them, and then run like hell to the next exhibit that you wanted to see before they closed. And by this 
time of night, almost everybody else is running for the gates and trying to get out and, and leave. So you could usually go you know, straight to GM or Ford or GE, get one last show in before it closed. How many fireworks um, launch points were there at the fair? Because wasn't there one also in one of the fountains, I, the fountain of the planets? That was a fountain of the planet uh, planets in there. Yeah, it's. Uh, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, did the Tower of uh, Light also shoot off fireworks? No, they just had the ta the big beam that went off. I, I'm not aware of any place else that had uh, fireworks okay. that went off. I don't know where we are right now. We are not at the fair. Um, the Bronx <laughs> or, Zoo. Or Catskill Game Park, maybe. <laughs> Doesn't mind mother. We'll see how long this lasts. Again, I did not splice these together. So, how many people here went to Catskill Game Farm? I, I I thought it was a wonderful spot, which they're trying to bring back. I understand. Definitely not the world's fair. This is where they sent you until there was a landing spot available on the TTA building. Yeah, really. <laughs> I mean, how many? I can remember vividly riding those rides as a kid and taking my, you know, kids on them, and the thrill of pushing the bar. And my goodness, the helicopter would go up, and you know, you were actually in charge of the thing. It was a, a cool sensation. Oh, it is Catskill Game Farm. Okay, Catskill Game Farm, nineteen sixty-five. And then we're back in the fair. I knew it wouldn't last too long because again, the reels are real small. Looks like a good day for the Swiss Sky Ride. It was a massive system and went incredibly high too. Flowers were always so nice. What's that, Wayne? The flowers were so oh, yeah. nice. They did a nice job on the flowers. Even when their budget was cut, they still kept putting money into keeping the fairgrounds looking nice. You know, some other fairs, uh, you know, the when the budgets got bad, it was one of the first things they did was whack the, uh, you know, the landscaping budget. But 64, they did a pretty good job. They had the problem, of course, with the, uh, besides the budget, they also had a bad drought. So that made a lot of the, the lawns and everything just absolutely fry because they had to cut the watering back to a bare minimum. Indonesia, Egypt. How many miles was the fair? It was approximately four times the size of uh, Disney World's Magic Kingdom. Whoa. Because that's a lot of walking to see that whole fair. Yeah. In, in terms of acreage. It was like 600 something acres, uh, roughly a square mile. Wow. Yeah, a lot of walking just to see the uh, Corona Park nowadays when you go to to uh, be nostalgic, it takes a long time to go around the whole thing. Yeah, I was just gonna mention, I went back to take pictures from one of my books in the now and after chapter and just walking around the park, you can take in the entire day and there's no lines to stand on or shows that you know, take your time, just it's a huge park. God, it makes you wonder what happened to all these people. It does, yeah. There's the astral found. You can see how big it was. And again, it rotated a pretty good clip. Sadly, many of these people are not, no longer with us. OK. Yeah. All right, so who, who can win the prize now? Now where are we? Oh, boy, you guys aren't paying attention to past talks. I have to do them all over again. We're in uh, Louisiana. 
Yeah, I always associate monkeys with Louisiana. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we're uh, here at the uh, newer, uh, what you call it, the, uh, so the artists had the whole big area there. Uh, you can get your pictures done in several different parts of the fair. Be interested to know how many of these people still have them. You know, your your. Family. If they don't have the movies, they probably don't have the pictures. <laughs> we just went through a thing on Vintage Disneyland on Facebook where a whole bunch of people posted, you know, uh, pictures they had, had done at the uh, art corner uh, there on, uh, you know, uh, Main Street for a while. So, you know, people did save them. It was their souvenir and the, it went home. So looks like this guy's taking time and doing a pretty nice job. Nice souvenir if you visit the Bourbon Street, huh? You're all frozen. I can't. It's not doing anything. Really? It's going okay on my end. Okay, on this one here. That's fine yeah, here. Fine. Put another quarter in the meter. <laughs> okay, off to Hawaii. There's that guy with the uh, yeah cardigan sweater again. <laughs> he gets around. I just found about six of those plastic lays in the attic. <laughs> Did you? They held up all this time. They didn't decay. Absol absolutely. <laughs> they're a little moldy, but other than that, they're okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> People have asked if those flags were any particular country. No, they were just colorful patterns. They had made to attract the eye. People at the gift shop. I, I'm stopped. Oh, I'm seen as the guy drawn. Oh, <laughs> go ahead and off. log off and log in. Yeah, log off and we'll let you back in. I'll stop the video. Maybe that'll. No, that's just my face. Yeah, it's just stopped you. Yeah, that just stops me. But to leave and come back? Yeah, yeah I'll let you in. Okay. Get your hand stamp for readmission before you go. <laughs> <laughs> the aerial tower ride. Hey, he took his sweater off. Didn't they serve waffles in that aerial tower ride? At the base of it, yeah. Oh, it was the actual, if you look in the guidebook, it's the aerial tower and waffles. You know, which, what a combination, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, at Expo 70, they had what looked kind of like oblong Ferris wheels where you ate a lunch while you were on the Ferris wheel ride. Oh, did there they? Five or six of them around the grounds. Each one had a different one. It was like fried chicken. One was ham sandwiches. That's neat. Didn't know that. Yeah. Did these birds sing the tiki room, tiki room song? <laughs> <laughs> these birds are like keep at performing. We don't want to get turned into tiki birds. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mentioned in my talk about the '64 show. Uh, I'm sorry, the 1939 World's Fair. They had the uh, bird train that, if you said probably want a cracker, it would tell you to go to Florida. <laughs> Better than that bird at Expo 67 that swore at the uh, fairgoers. Yeah, like bird in Guyana. Yeah. And it could do it in two languages. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that poor bird got sent home real fast. We got put on the, the country's Christmas uh, uh, stamp that year. I was gonna say, yeah, he was featured on a postage stamp, yeah. Yeah. These pictures of the GM pavilion, I mean, it really shows how incredibly huge it was. It was incredible, wasn't it? Just the yeah. pavilion. Well, what was that tower on top? It looks like a bunch of old speakers or something. I'm it was a rotating thing that uh, had the time and temperature it would rotate around until it was uh, 304, 72 degrees, and it just rotated around and, and did that. 
And again, stuff you know we take for granted today, digital clocks, right? You know, digital yeah. thermometers. Well, that was cutting edge stuff back then. I actually found a picture of the 39 pair of a digital clock, which is the first one I, I've seen of you know uh, any particular technology like that. But this was big stuff for back then. You notice how slowly that sky streak is going? Yeah. Docking. I didn't think the motors could be go down that low. Yeah, I think they geared it down for docking. Yeah, at the end of the run, you would slow down as it hits one of the trips, but along the route, it should go at a fixed speed. Yeah. Unless the film was going low, slow. No, I think it was it went up there fairly slow, so it didn't bang into the stop at the end. Hmm. We're almost near the end of this. So many different fountains all over the place. Westinghouse across the road there. Did you say you could never find a uh, pattern for the luminaires? Because they, they still intrigue me. There are so many different shapes and sizes. Yeah, if you go on my site, the entire chart of where they are and what the patterns were is uh, the PDF of all of them out there. They were originally supposed to be by sight and uh, shape and color, you could find your way back to the Unisphere, but nobody could ever figure it out. So they stopped about a, two weeks in the fair trying to convince people that that pattern worked. But we have mapped out every light and color and where they are. So go to my main site and, and look down for uh, the World's Fair Operations Manual. And uh, it's got every light where it is. It's got, a, it was basically giant blueprints of the fair where all the benches were, you know, what's in all the conduits, but there's a, a whole section on the luminaires. It, is the rules for navigation clear or is that something not yet clear? I'm sorry, you broke up a little. I'm sorry, um, are the rules for navigating back to the Unisphere clear or is that something we haven't oh, cracked? Yeah. It was totally obscure and nobody has cracked it. Where were the luminaires made? I know where they were designed, but who made them? Uh, I believe Westinghouse made them. I do have pictures of a factory where they're making them all. And uh, the, uh, the guys just had pieces of them all over and they're all from store horses putting them together. As we've mentioned, they were absolutely huge. So I'll, I'll have to look for that, but there's a picture of a guy there, uh, you know, uh, putting them together. Hey, 45 minute waiting time for our 45 minute show. Yeah, imagine the Luminaire factory getting all those uh, configurations by looking at paper blueprints, no computers. Yeah, I was thinking, just think how much space you need to store them after you've built them and you're waiting for the fair corporation to come and take them. Those things are huge. I mean, they're you know, several feet across and you've got hundreds of them. They had to have a big warehouse. Hey, now it's moving. Got a pretty good breeze going today. There's snow white it's right up there. Bill, years ago, um, an antique dealer told me that he saw a lumineer uh, sticking out of Meadow Lake out of the mud. That would have been a good trick to do. Those things weigh a ton. Yeah, and they're a lot bigger than you think they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All the men in ties carrying their jackets. My grandfather was that way. I think the only time he ever did anything without a tie was when we went fishing. But we'd have a you know backyard barbecue, he'd show up in a tie. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> I let them out and I couldn't find her. <laughs> Equitable. We can watch it. Will the number go up? Will anybody be born? Oh, it didn't happen. 
be rather worrisome if the number went down. Yeah, never saw it go down. <laughs> Standing there and the person watching it, and the person next to you keels over and the number goes down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, a lot of these pavilions like here found out the, the disadvantage of that things like having a speed ramp was that if people would just go up it and you needed to now put somebody at the bottom to control the queue of people going up the ramps because otherwise if everything at the top was full, now you had a problem, <laughs> which we found when we opened Space Mountain. You know, one of my, uh, my pet peeves is when people go up a speed ramp or an escalator and then stop at the top. Yeah. Yeah. Well, people yeah. are piling up behind them. Yeah. Bill, you worked the opening of Space Mountain in Disneyland or Disney World? Disneyland. It was more popular than we dared believe. And it's, uh, the line got all the way down to the train station on Main Street. So uh, it was a four and a half hour wait for a two minute and 31 second ride. It was just wow. absolutely insane. But you had to hire somebody to stay at the bottom of the speed ramp, just not to let people go up until there was a, a cleared area, because otherwise everybody would get on it, you know, thinking, you know, I don't need to wait for it to be clear. I'll just get on. Well, it didn't move as fast at the top as it did at the bottom, you know, the, the line. I, I can just remember I rode Space Mountain Disney World soon after it opened, and they had to have a guy walking up and down the line telling people that it was a roller coaster because people didn't know that. So there's a guy who just walked up and down the line saying, Space Mountain's a roller coaster. Space Mountain's a roller coaster. It was the weirdest thing I ever saw. I tricked uh, my a girlfriend of mine, her 75-year-old mother, into going on Space Mountain to Disneyland, telling her it was an educational tour of outer space. <laughs> About killed me when we got off the ride. <laughs> You know, it's, it's funny how naive people can get, though. You know, you take yeah. people on small worlds for the first time, and somebody says, oh, this thing's really a dull ride. You go, yeah, wait till you get to the loop. And they look at you. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard to loop a boat. Well, that guy's, know. Uh, he's got a heck of a job hopping around. I didn't know Space Mountain was a roller coaster. Oh, yeah. That's... Uh, the, the indoor version of the Matterhorn. <laughs> I just watched something on YouTube, I think, about how they designed it. It was pretty interesting. What's really cool is we were, we were on the People Mover one time, and there was a problem on Space Mountain, and they had all the lights inside on. And you could see the frame of the coaster inside the building. Mm -hmm. It's actually terrifying to ride it with the, the lights on. Uh, Tom Morris, you've probably been on it with the lights on, right? I was a sandbag one time for the one in California and went on it about 10 times in a row with the lights on. Uh, I was probably one of the guys that put you on it. We used to go to the in-between the employee cafeteria and who'd like to be one of the first people to ride Space Mountain? We uh, must have been working at it at about the same time because I yeah. was in... Um, I was doing. I was probably doing crowd control for it because I've just gotten into operations. Yeah, uh, but I, we, I'd go over and get people, put them on it, and we'd ride it through. What, what we were trying to do is, we had again, technology is great, but it doesn't work in reality. There's a scale underneath the uh, part of the track, and we would weigh the weight of everybody getting on, figure out the coefficient of friction for that particular sled. And the idea was your computer optimize the dispatch schedule so that you could get more of them out faster rather than going every second, you know, 30 seconds or whatever you could do, you know, based on the weight. So we would put people through it and we would, uh, Tom mentioned it was a sandbag. We first did it with sandbags, then we did it with real people, but then real people tend to move and shift. The weights were going up and down as people were moving back and forth. So that, that didn't last long. And what Bill didn't tell us was that the brakes were asbestos. So every time we hit the brakes, asbestos <laughs> was emitted into the air. So uh, in minute <laughs> details. 
you know, the, the we we were playing around with Space Mountain, you know, and you, you put all the sandbags through it, and we thought finally, hey, this would be a really great thing to, to go and ride it. So uh, we we did the uh, thing where a bunch of us jumped in it, hit the dispatch button, jumped, pulled the bar down, we got up to the first turn, and the damn ride stopped. <laughs> I was on the down part of the turn and there's a big heavy guy on the up part of the turn falling into me. And all I could do is hold him back and he's holding on the other side of the sled because he didn't want to be on top of me anymore than I wanted him on me. And we're sitting there saying, what the hell do we do? The only people who know how to run this thing are stuck here in this damn turn. <laughs> about, it seemed like hours later, it's probably about eight minutes later, the guy from down below, is there anybody up there? Out? Yeah, yeah. And we had to tell him what to do to come up and get us. But it was like, okay, we will not do any more unauthorized tests unless there's somebody down below that knows what the hell they're doing. But it seemed like a great idea at the time. <laughs> Glenn Barker is one of the voices that you hear on the comm chat. Is he? Is he still here? I don't know if he's still here. I can only see a certain number of faces. I don't think he's here anymore. Um, I'm looking at the uh, list. Obviously, the water show for 65 over at the uh, amphitheater. You can imagine for the people that in the beginning and the end of the fair season, how cold that probably was. I don't know if they heated the water or not, but even if it's heated and you get wet and you're getting sprayed around and everything, that had to be uh, kind of chilly. If, any, if anyone's ever water skied, the area that these people had to do to perform in is incredible. They, they, they really are great skiers. Yeah, it's it's very tight, isn't it? And even the guys with the boats, they didn't have a lot of room for mar margin for error. I wonder if they came from Cypress Gardens. Yeah, they did. They did? State of Florida contracted with him. I think his name was Pope. Um, and he put together, it's the same guy that did the show for the uh, uh, 62 fair at the last minute for uh, Seattle. Well, I'm getting dizzy. Yeah, one well, of my thought, you could be joining the audience in this. What was that? I said, one wipeout, you could easily be joining the audience. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> and it's at the end. There we go. OK, stop share. Oh, my goodness. We still have some people left. So uh, people enjoy a, a virtual trip back with some oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah well, awesome. what people have put here in chat. What was that? Somebody's feet. <laughs> Somebody, somebody got a little too comfortable. <laughs> oh, Flipper, 64 to 67. Okay, yeah, I thought it was around the same time, and why, which why everybody was real thrilled about all the, uh, the show. So, uh, yeah, well, any thoughts, people? I mean, people were pretty much able to talk during the thing, which I thought would be a nice change. And thank you, everybody, for behaving themselves, for, and especially for not singing Small World. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have uh, a thought that came to mind when you were talking about how uh, people getting out of the rides and trying to steal things. Um, I remembered that at the Science Museum in Chicago, they had an exhibit of four living rooms from different eras uh, of uh, of the U.S., which seemed to me like a small prototype for the carousel of progress. But the thing that brought that to mind is they had pressure switches under the carpeting, so people wouldn't uh, crawl in the exhibit and you know sit in the rocking chair or something like that. Yeah, it was, it was funny. Years ago, Carol may get a kick out of this. We went up to Hearst Castle with uh, my friend, uh, the, the same guy that ended up owning the Long Island Railroad. Model. I was just thinking of that, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we went up to Hearst Castle and uh, Bill and Mary and their, their son, Alan. I think Alan was probably about six or seven, something like that. 
and we go into one of the buildings and they tell you, uh, we're going to be going to see all these priceless things. Whatever you do, uh, stay on the rope. Don't step over uh, onto the carpets because they're all large. And Alice put, re immediately steps on, you know, his foot over onto the carpet and his loud bell goes off. And uh, Bill is just mortified. And for the rest of the, the visit, I think poor Alan had to stay in the dead center of all the walkways. If he got anywhere near the edge of it, Bill would uh, guide him back. But I was instantly, they said, whatever you do, don't do this. And bam, he did it. So yeah, that's, the, that's the way the public is. But yeah, there's a guy actually on, uh, on YouTube that did a movie of breaking into the Horizons Pavilion at uh, uh, Disney World at Ep Epcot, where they had a spot where they realized that there were no cameras and they would slip out of it and dump, jump into the ride. And they would spend the entire day in there, uh, you know, uh, videotaping themselves running around, uh, you know, uh, hiding within the, some of the sets of watching people go by. And every now and then you can see some kids say, Daddy, who's that old man over there? Why is he over there? And then, uh, I mean, Disney obviously not happy that they did this. But, uh, you know, as Tom knows, there's switches and mats and cameras and everything to try to stop people from doing that, that sort of stuff today. Three new messages. What's down here at the bottom? Oh, Hoot and Cheek. Oh, Beth has seen it. Yeah, it's incredible to watch. And, you know, they uh, they got caught and people were chasing them through the buildings and running up and down back staircases and all the rest. Unbelievable. So, well, I hope folks enjoyed it. Next week, we have a, a different, get to you one second, Brock. Next week, uh, okay. Paul, uh, uh is going to talk about what it was like to work at the uh, New York State Pavilion after the fair when it was the uh, uh, roller rink. And uh, I think he subtitled his talk, The Last Man on the Roof. And you'll see him out actually walking on the roof of the New York State Pavilion. So uh, not to the faint of, of, of heart, but uh, looking forward to having him join us. Go ahead, Brock. Yeah, just a couple of comments. Um... My grandparents, uh, when I was a kid, went on a vacation and they were in Arizona and they stayed at a motel overnight. When they got out the next morning to go, there was parked next to their car, a Chrysler turbine car that they were touring the country. They se sent several of these out touring the country to try to sell the idea. And so they got to see it and it was a Chrysler Corporation person that was doing it. And they had these models of the car they gave out to anybody who showed interest in it. And oh. so I don't know if you can see it very oh, well. Wow, yeah. I, I may have to turn off the background. I just, in my picture, it's kind of going out, but this is the model that they gave them of the turbine mm -hmm. car and they brought it home and gave it to me and I still have it today. So that was one thing. The other thing was you were, when you're talking about things being stolen from shows and uh, it came up about Snow White and the apple and when we redid the Disneyland show, I was the designer on that um, back in the early 80s. Um, we wanted to try to solve that problem. We came up with using a parabolic mirror and designed the track going yeah. by the cottage in a way that it, as you went by, it looked like the arm came out at you holding the apple, you know, saying, have an apple, dearie. But if you reached out, there was nothing there. It was just air because it was a reflection you were seeing through a parabolic mirror. And that was yeah, kind of an interesting well, thing. So, very well done. Yeah, they did, they did not have to have a box of apples sitting behind the scenes after that. Hey, yeah. Brock, uh, that model that you had of the Chrysler Turbine, was it assembled when your parents got it? Yes, it it's actually was, it was like, you, you know, you could go and buy some of these cars already made at a hobby shop. They weren't a model kit. They were just, uh, you know, it's, it's just a couple of pieces. It's the outer shell, a windshield on it, and then there's four screws that hold the bottom section in, which can come out, and then you have, of course, the wheels. And it says on it, you know, um, the Experimental Chrysler Corporation Turbine Car, and then made in USA. And on the license plates, it says, uh, has the Chrysler insignia and says Chrysler. Yeah. So um, I remember it was just something out. they were giving out. Yeah, I made the, a Ravel or whatever. Yeah, there it is. Kid, yeah. yeah Wayne, Wayne has one too. Wayne one has one too. There it is. There's the bottom of it. Oops. Again, there we go. Oh, yeah. 
You know, when I worked at Disney, uh, down at Disneyland, they had a, a file that the accounting department called the, uh, the guilt trip file. And people would periodically send money into Disney. Like when I was a kid, I stole one of the apples from Snow White. I'm really sorry. And I feel bad. And here's 10 bucks. And they called in one day and said, now this is a real one to top. And it was some guy that felt really bad because he loved to shoot spitballs at the dolls in Small World. And uh, uh, felt really bad thinking back later that somebody had to clean all his spit uh, off the, the Small World dolls. So he sent in you know, something like $21 or something, some weird amount that he hoped would cover an hour or two of uh, spitball cleaning off the doll figures and hopes people still weren't doing it today. So uh, he got a kick, kick out of that. Matter of fact, LAPD, last week, somebody mailed in a pair of handcuffs that they had stolen from an officer got involved in a fight in the 70s and the handcuffs fell off and this guy stole the handcuffs took them home and he was showing his grandkids the, the handcuffs and they were horrified they had stolen a policeman's handcuffs so he just mailed them back 40 years later sorry that he still had them but uh yeah I, I, brock do you have any idea how they keep people from breaking the uh the jaw off on the dog these days with the key no i i don't know if they've come up with anything on that. I mean, I think they just tried to put enough stuff between you and it. I mean, if you got out of the boat, you could get to it. But I, you know, it's been a while since I've been on the ride, since I live up up in the Sierras now, um, and I don't know how that may have changed. But yeah, that was you know there was always something they were trying to people were trying to grab. Yeah, and you had to come up with different ways to. Uh, and they had to keep a box of keys behind it and they finally started welding and then they broke the dog's jaw and i understood they made it a very very heavy duty aa figure that it won't come off now but yeah they have pressure mats everything all over there so if you jump out to try to take the dog's key uh, the loudspeakers are going to go off real quick yeah too bad they can't just put in a mild electric shock <laughs> i was thinking of a laser <laughs> yeah I just have the dog bite him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is there any lasers? Truth, I'm sorry, any true to the rumor that Disney is reopening on April 1st? No, they got they're able by law to open on April 1st, but they said they're not going to be ready. So they're hoping to get it open the third week of April. That they need to uh, you know get the cast members retrained, not so much in just operating the rides, but on what the new safety protocols and distancing protocols are going to be. So they're aiming for the third week of, uh, of April now. Are they planning on limiting admission? 15%, that's the state mandate. 15% of what? I mean, uh... That's the issue. Disney has never publicly stated what the capacity of Disneyland is. And some of the guys internally are trying to figure out what do you do with that? Because they don't want that number publicly released, but they have to tell the state what it is so they can do it. But it would be 15% of that number, which I think a bunch of us work have a pretty good idea what the hypothetical capacity is. But uh, I, I was saying, Carol and I were talking about it last night. I'm sure some rides or attractions are not going to be open. I'm sure uh, the submarine, for example, that would be a, a COVID fest is, is not going to be open. So it's going to be real interesting to see. Uh, now, they're doing, I think, 35% capacity at Disney World. And this entire week for spring break is totally sold out. So I, even at 15%, as soon as they put the tickets on sale for Disneyland, I think they'll be gone in 15 minutes. So uh, he buys a ticket for a specific date, I'm assuming. A date and time, yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I went to Expo 2015 in Milan and that's, that's, that's how they did it. Yeah. I bought uh, my tickets in advance for myself and the, my travel companion. And, you know, we had, both working for the airlines, we went standby. So we had to make sure we got on those flights luckily we did and it worked out good because it wasn't extremely crowded it was manageable you know yeah i was going to say bill it would be kind of interesting to go to disneyland during this time with the 15 percent. it might be like it was back in the 50s yeah. and early 60s when you can really go and enjoy yourself and and you could see main street not just a bunch of heads yeah yeah it's uh it's 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 it has some appeal, but right now, uh, I, I, having gone a year of hardly even leaving the house, I don't think I'm going to make my first place I go to Disneyland to be around a bunch of people who may not have been as careful as I've been. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Last, 
Uh, he so said the last few said, times that I've gone, uh, my neighbor works for Disney, and she signed me in, but I'm assuming they won't allow that. You know, oh, now I'm sure all the main gate passes and everything I'm sure are going to be on on lockdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I uh, again, I've seen the park with nobody in it but me, so I'll have to just look at my old pictures of empty Main Street or or whatever, but. I, I just posted a picture last night from Disneyland of 64 on Facebook and everybody's commenting, everybody's on the sidewalk, you know, because back then you didn't need to walk in the middle of the street. It was just, you know, it's a street, there's sidewalks, you walk on the sidewalk, you know. Uh, today, of course, you can't even run the Main Street vehicles 90% of the time because the street's just so, so crowded. So, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's funny. I have friends that work at the park today they have real mixed emotions about going back. Uh, you know, they want their paychecks, but they're not at all looking forward into getting into confrontations with people when they tell them they have to put the, uh, the mask on or they've got to socially distance. They've had some pretty obnoxious problems in Florida with it, and uh, they're not at all looking forward to, uh, to dealing with it out here. I can only imagine. You know, I, I retired from Delta Airlines as a result of COVID, they gave us a really good package. And uh, my friends who have stayed said, basically, you're uh, that slide, just walk up and down the aisle, hand out water and snacks, and then you uh, go through several times to tell people to put their masks on and they argue with them. So. Yeah, we're going to open the library and they had a whole thing about, we had a whole meeting about what you say and what you do if somebody decides they're not going to wear a mask. I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine. Uh, I'm going to get my, my second shot today, but mm -hmm. a lot of the people that work at the library are too young. So they're going to open in April, they claim, and, and they can't get a shot. So they're going to be <laughs> opening it, and God knows how they're going to handle it. I mean, it's too bad people have to work without shots. Yeah. At these public places. Yeah, flight attendants in California have just been raised to the top of the list for yeah. their 1B or whatever the. Yeah, they let is. people in uh, retail work get it. And I commented on that and they said, well, libraries are not among any of this. So whenever you can get the shot, you can get the shot. Yeah. It's, it's quite a conundrum when. Carol and I got our shots, the second ones, two weeks ago. I, I, up until the time the needle was in my arm, I couldn't believe it was finally going because we had off again, on again, you know, all, all sorts of things. And like out here in California, they, you know, we'd say, oh, police officers don't count. You know, you don't uh, get it. Meanwhile, there's officers getting sick left and right. So uh, when I, I got it, I said, hey, see, being old is better than, uh, than not sometimes. So. Yeah, we well, see, I'm, I'm an older woman, so they're going to give it to me, but... If you're in your 20s or in your 30s, you, you're out of luck. Oh, yeah. So I, I commented, I said, well, maybe the people that work in there would be more easy if they had these shots. And they said, well, unless they're in that, that age group to get it, they can't get it. Although Biden did say he's going to open it up to everyone May 1st. Yeah. So th it's not too long, but still, if you got to work in April. Yeah, so we'll see how Disney, I mean, obviously the Disney stock is doing great, you know, so, uh, you know, between Disney Plus being a runaway success, now that people are getting ready to open the parks and everything, that's great, but I, I still, for my friends that work there, I, I feel for them, from the safety factor of the virus and also for the idiots, they're going to want to just punch them out, so. Yeah, you know, that's the trouble, we've got such a diverse group of people. And some people feel they just don't have to do this. No. And I, I don't want to be the one that has to confront somebody about that. I'm not very good at confronting, so. <laughs> well, I will hope everybody uh, does get their shots and get safe and everything. And like I said, next week uh, we have, uh, I haven't seen all the pictures. I don't really know what we're going to be uh, looking at in, in detail, but uh, he has a, uh, um, fascinating thing again he went through the, uh, uh, the empty pavilions they decided they needed some benches over at the new york state pavilion for people to sit on to tie their laces for their skates so they went over to the uh, uh united states pavilion and picked some of them up and just carried them out brought them over and he was in there scavenging for stuff along the times of joey and that but uh he's got some great pictures of the uh 
New York State Pavilion uh, from the roll rink days that are kind of rare. So um, look, hope folks join us. Again, I suggest if anybody has a topic that you're interested in doing it as we hit the one year anniversary for this, please uh, do let me know and uh, hope uh, folks come up with idea and uh, look forward to seeing you next week for uh, Charles's talk up at the top of the uh, top of the pavilion. Thanks, Bill. Have Thank a great you weekend, so much. All. So good to see you all. Good to Bye, see everybody. Everybody. Thanks, Thank you, Bill. Great presentation. Take care. Be safe. Thanks. Take care. Take care, Take care now. Bye. Bye-bye, everybody.